So I'm very, very happy to be here. And I'm here because of uh, the invitation that I initially received uh, from Brother Saladin Farrakhan. Where is he? He outside, see? Somebody go get him. So, because I, I don't like uh, that sometimes we do things that are really good and great, but then there's no acknowledgement. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying thank you. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right, brother. I appreciate it. So there, there he is. Uh, give the brother a hand. And, and look as if he's clapping for himself. No, no, wait, wait, wait now. I'm going to use you as, as, as an example, Brother Saladin. See, why is he clapping for himself? If you look, you say, he, that brother's clapping for himself. He's not really clapping for himself. He's actually giving the credit to Allah. He's not, he's not big headed and conceited. That's not ego on display. That's actually humility. Where he's just as happy and tickled over uh, the outcome of something that maybe he was a participant in, but he knows. Or he feels that he was a tool being used for a greater purpose to accomplish a greater good. And that certainly is true. Let me tell you something else about Brother Saladin, who I, I've come to know in this last year. And the reason I came to know him and some of you a little bit better in this past year in a very important way is because brother and a party of believers from Philadelphia came to my clinic this past January. And I do a certain kind of testing. I test for toxic substances, toxic metals, chemicals, all that kind of stuff. And one of the tests that I have is for radiation. And in seven years of testing thousands and thousands of people, I never had a single positive test for radiation. And then on one day, Brother Saladin and the party that he was traveling with, all from Philadelphia, everybody tested for high levels of radiation. I said, what is going on in Philadelphia? So then, to make a long story short, we came to Philadelphia and did screening of many, many people and we found out about 40-some percent of people in Philadelphia were testing positive for radiation. And I'm thinking at the time, I even spoke from this rostrum about that at the time, I'm thinking it must be the radiation coming from Japan, from the Fukushima reactors that exploded. Brother Saladin has a talk radio show he invited me to come on the show to talk about the radiation problem in Philadelphia. I did the show. I also spoke before the leadership group that uh, is centered around uh, Kenny Gamble, and I gave them a report of the findings about radiation in Philadelphia. So then, out of all of that activity, the Department of Health in the city of Philadelphia started investigating and what they found was that you have a nuclear power plant called Limerick That's right. That's right. and Limerick was taking radioactive wastewater and dumping it into the Schuylkill River. See? See? And of course that's where the drinking water for Philadelphia comes from and so the reason that people in Philadelphia were contaminated with radioactivity wasn't because of Japan. Come on. It was because of your own local nuclear power plant poisoning the water supply, and they, they said that it was legal for them to dump radioactive waste into the water supply. And when they checked into it, they found out it is legal to poison the water supply of Philadelphia or any other city with radioactive waste. The point I'm coming to 
as a result of what we did, by the grace and help of Allah, rational heads prevailed and they shut the nuclear power plant down. Because whether it was legal or not, that stuff is wrong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A whole lot of stuff might be legal, that don't make it right. right. So now, I was asking Brother Saladin about the latest information about that. He doesn't even, he doesn't even realize that he shut down a nuclear power plant. So I'm using that as an example that's right in the room. Because when I went around the country and I told the story of Philadelphia, radiation in Philadelphia to different people, they were patting me on the back. They were saying, brother or sir, because some of them weren't brothers necessarily. What did they say, Doc? Say, you saved the lives of millions of people. I had to think about that. He said, yeah, because you got them to shut down a nuclear power plant that was poisoning millions of people, and everybody knows that if you get exposed to enough radiation over a long enough period of time, you're going to get cancer and die. So I had to submit to the logic. Say, well, I want to go back up to Philadelphia and see whether the radiation levels are coming down. And I'm proud to report that the people that I tested yesterday, the radiation has gone down to zero. But the only reason, the only reason it went down to zero is because we were able to bring attention to the issue to cause them to shut the nuclear power plant down. So you're looking at a brother there. You can turn around and look at him. Don't look at me. Turn around and look, look at him. See, the scripture says that we will send saviors after them. That's the point I'm trying to make. Now, I know I'm embarrassing you, Brother Saladin, <laughs> and I apologize. But also, I want to bring attention to something. What am I trying to do here? I'm saying that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is not the only one that's on the team that's doing something or that's capable of doing something. I'm pointing out, hopefully, the fact that you're on the team, too. And you can score some points, too if you just start doing it. <laughs> you don't even necessarily have to be conscious of what you're doing. Like Brother Saladin. He didn't, he didn't start out thinking like, I'm gonna save millions of people. He still don't even think that. He thinks I'm just saying that. I'm not just saying that. I'm only saying it because it happens to be true. Maybe you don't know too much about radiation. You probably don't. You're the average person, well, you know about it. I happen to know about it because that's my business to know about it. And I know what the consequences would be. For example, when I left Philadelphia, I went to Los Angeles. Found out that 67% of people in Los Angeles are also radioactive. Haven't actually figured out where it's coming from. More than likely it is coming from Japan. Haven't proven that to be true, but more than likely it is. During a 42-day period of time, from late December 2011 to the end of January, in 2012, 
the background radiation in Los Angeles, California, the second largest city in the country, was five times normal. <clears throat> now, just so you have something to, to compare it to, if at, the, say, the Philadelphia airport, where they have radiation detectors, in case somebody's trying to commit a terrorist act or something like that, if they detected background radiation three times normal, they would evacuate the airport. They would shut it down. So here you have the entire city of Los Angeles for 42 days at five times normal, and it actually peaked at seven times normal. And the government didn't say a thing, except if you knew where to look, they were actually reporting on it, but they didn't report it in the media. It didn't come on television. And that process is continuing even as we speak. So then it means you have an entire city, and maybe, I don't know, because I'm only one person, I can't do everything that needs to be done, you may have an entire state or states that are being affected by the radiation that's spewing out of the nuclear reactors in Japan and contaminating the environment in which you live. Right. Say, well, why are you bringing this up? I thought your, uh, I thought your topic was man the image of God. It don't sound like you're talking about man, the image of God. Well, think again. You are in trouble in many different ways. I'm just picking on radiation, but I don't have to stop there. You're in trouble across the board. You have an employment problem, don't you? You got an economic problem, don't you? You got a drug problem, a crime problem, a violence problem. You got a housing problem. You got an education problem. You got a political problem. You got a spiritual problem. You got a psychological problem, don't you? Because when you actually look at yourself in the mirror, you, you know that you're crazy, don't you? You actually know that. And when you go out on the street, you say, let, let me put on my normal face so I can look normal, act normal, and nobody will know I'm crazy. Guess what? Your secret is slipping out. 